we went into Normandy. I'm gonna tell you, they were some some mean paratroopers. I mean, I, I, they were taught, we were taught to kill, and that's what they did, period, you know. And like I say, I never seen no coward, nobody refused anything in combat in my 508, in my regiment, period. And that was the whole purpose of being in the Army and becoming a Green Beret. Like, why stay back in the States when there was a war going on? You needed to get over there. I had to prove something to myself, and I wanted, and again, the reason I wanted to get there was because this would be the most historic event in my lifetime. And I wanted to be a part of it, and I wanted to see if I, if I could measure up. And uh, it was the ultimate test to go there and fight, and I felt it an honor to go for my country and go for it. I deployed in uh, November of 67. I wasn't there 30 days when the Tet Offensive hit. And that's when we were, we meaning the 101st, uh, were super active because uh, we got called to uh, go in and help uh, bail out the uh, American Embassy in, in Saigon, which had a hole blown in the front of the building and our troops actually deployed to the roof of the American Embassy and worked their way through the building chasing out the PC. Who, we attacked it at that time. That was our first real encounter. When we got torpedoed, it was in the Mediterranean, and they came up in the middle of, of the convoy and just shot everything that they had because they knew that the war was almost over. It was on its way out. And they had to hit something, and that's why they only hit the bow. If they hit it midship, poof, we went right down in the Mediterranean. I wouldn't be here today. So we were going up a river and we were in tall grass and I had an uh, alpha squad up front and then I was in the middle of the column. And my platoon sergeant was right at the back end of the alpha squad and we were having to go single file through this deep grass and shooting started up front and I called to find out what was going on and the platoon sergeant was trying to get back to me and there was a lot of radio traffic as usually happens when the shooting starts. And the tips of the grass were disappearing from the rounds uh, flying by. And I had the handset like this with a curly cord connecting me to the radio on the back of the radio man. And I'm yelling, what the heck is going on up there? And all of a sudden, a Vietnamese voice comes on the line and says, Lieutenant Barker. And I thought, who is this? And he said, "You, we are going to kill you. We're going to kill you tonight. You'll be dead tomorrow. This guy's threatening me personally. And then when he used my name, something happened and I snapped and I thought, I'm dead, this is way too personal. Well, I was getting 10 Hueys, uh, slick helicopters, lift helicopters, and a cab troop every day to go find a fight because our intelligence was so lousy. And um, the two days before that, I got into a fight uh, in the same area on the south side of the Plain of Reeds. And uh, I was putting in a lift to five and a lift to five, and, and I landed on this LZ, and it was a mess. There was one helicopter down, there were bodies all over, it was just terrible. So I had two companies then, B Company here and A Company here. And we started forward, and we fought and we fought and we fought. And we, this went on for three or four hours there, and we fought way into the night. I hadn't slept the night before, and I. It was amazing. I finally, about three or four in the morning, I remember falling asleep, and the uh, there were pools of water all over in the Mekong Delta, and I'd lay down beside one of them, sound asleep. And uh, when I woke up about an hour later, there was a dead VC laying beside me who wasn't there when I went to sleep. When I got blown up, I didn't realize the full magnitude of what had happened to me until about four years later. And uh, I, was, uh, I was sitting on my couch, and I'm, I'm a weapons sergeant, so I, I've done the math. I figure I've fired about a quarter of a million bullets in my life. And I realized that in all the training I've done, in all the, the uh, weapons handling I've done, I'd never seen a bullet from the barrel, down, down the barrel of the gun. And it didn't bother me. I was, I was, ready, I was ready to kill myself. You know, I... I decided that I was going to do everything I could do to get better and and part of what helped me get better was you know adaptive sports. I took to archery uh, because of the fact that I could not do it without calming down. Just that 
understanding that we all have some kind of challenge to work with was, it just kind of gives that instant bond. There's no comparison of, well, your injury is worse than mine. It's just this, you know what? We're a team and we're here because we've all faced challenges, but each one of us, to some degree or another, has made the decision to get up and keep going. We as soldiers in transition live for these events because they are the air that I breathe. That's how important they are. Without these games, there would not be a James Brad key today. There would not be. We got the best armor we ever had. We live in the best country in the world, and we got our freedom. I think that's a death.